This is J Big Ticket 23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to optimize a Precision T5500 workstation for gaming or other high end computing. Um, now, T5500s are going on about 10 years old right now, but as we're going to show you in this video, um, they can be optimized pretty well for gaming or other high end computing. Uh, it just depends on the components you install into them. Um, so, First thing you want to do is go to greenpcgamers.com, click on the blog page, and search articles for T5500 um, because everything that we um, show you in this video and more will be located on this blog page. Um, depending on your budget, we give you the part numbers and uh, the, you know, the, the model components that will work in your system. Um, so you can use this page to shop and, and upgrade your Precision T5500 to something that fits within your budget. Um, and we have everything on here from monitors um, to memory to processors uh, to NVMe, um, graphics cards, everything you need to know. All right, so let's get to the build. All right, so uh, first we're going to tell you what we already had installed into our T5500. Uh, we do have two processors installed. Uh, they're the quad-core Xeon X5687 processors. Uh, they run at 3.6 gigahertz with a max turbo frequency at 3.86 gigahertz, uh, which is awesome because um, they're very high clock speed for the system. And in fact, they're the fastest you can get for the T5500. Um, we have 24 gig of DDR3 memory installed, uh, runs on 1333 megahertz. Um, that's a max speed based off the CPUs. Uh, we have a 256 gig solid state drive installed as our boot device. Um, here's one of our big upgrades. Um, we have a Western Digital Black NVMe.2 512 gig um, solid state drive installed with the PCI Express adapter. Now you might be thinking, why not use that as the boot device? Well, the T5500 does not support NVMe as a boot device, but we can use it as a, a super fast I.O. storage device. Um, so we can use it just like any other hard drive, store all of our large files on it, um, games, um, anything that we want to open up super fast. Uh, the other big upgrade that we're installing is the EVGA GTX 1080 um, graphics card. Um, and then, uh, as, as everybody knows, the system already has an 875 watt power supply standard, which is great for all the components we're going to install. Um, let's go ahead and, and take a look at um, uh, the chassis and see you know, the front of the T5500. Now, this is a refurb chassis. Again, this system is going on about 10 years old. Here's a look at the front of the chassis. A um, couple of USB ports, audio, um, DVD or W optical drive. Here's our GTX 1080 card that we're going to install. Here's our power adapter and our NVMe SSD with our um, card adapter. All right, here's the back of the chassis. More USB ports. Uh, we've got some ancient parallel ports, eSATA. Uh, more importantly, our gigabit and our, and our USB ports. All right, there's our 875 watt power supply. Going to give us plenty of wattage for our graphics card. All right, so we first we have to remove our side panel to install these upgrades. So there's a lever right here you just pull back. And I only have one hand, so I'm going to go ahead and pull back on it. And then it should pop that side panel up. And I'll be able to pull it right off even with one hand. All right, so here's the inside of the chassis. Uh, we've got our SSD um, already installed. That's your boot device. And you can see in the bottom right we have our processor, secondary processor riser. And here are our I.O. slots where we're going to install our graphics card as well as our NVMe. Um, we're going to show you how to open up that area so that you can install another card. And our graphics card will go right into that blue slot. Now, there's two 75-watt ports, um, and we're going to use the blue one. All right, so first we have to install our uh, dual 6-pin to 8-pin power adapter, which is required by this GTX 1080 graphics card. So luckily on this system, it already has two six pin uh, cables coming out the power supply standard. So those are already there. Uh, we're gonna fast forward, we've clipped them right into place. Um, so that's ready to go uh, for when we put our graphics card into the system. Okay, so now we have to take a look at the six pin power, that's where it is. And we basically have to get ready to install the graphics card. And we've already removed the blue retention clip. Um, and we're going to have to do a little bit more of that, as you see further on in this video. All right, so basically this card's super heavy. 
So all you have to do is line it up on the slot. And once it's lined up, you just have to drop it in. And it's, it's heavy enough where once it's lined up, it'll drop in. You don't have to put bar barely any pressure. Um, so we've got it lined up. We've got it installed. Now we just need to plug in our 8-pin auxiliary power. All right, so this plugs in really easily like so. And that clicks into place. Now we're ready to go. If you forget to plug that in, uh, don't worry. The system will not boot. It'll complain about uh, the auxiliary power not being plugged in. All right, so here's our MVME.2 uh, SSD. Here's our adapter card that we're using for it. If you want to copy us, you can see the model part number right there. Otherwise, we do have a link to that on the Green PC Gamers blog page. Like I said, any of these components, including the graphics card, NVMe, it's all listed. All right, so we want to put this NVMe card below the graphics card because there's no fans. So we're going to remove our secondary processor riser. And so if you don't have this installed, don't worry about it. You'll be able to see uh, this slot pretty easily. But if you do, uh, it might help you to remove it just like we did. All right, so now we have a bunch of space to drop this card into place. This card's a little bit lighter, so you will have to put pressure on it when installing. Okay, so now we want to click this back into place, but this blue plastic retention clip is not able to shut because our new graphics card is kind of a monster. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove, there's two screws. It's a small Phillips head screwdriver that you need. And you're going to remove both of those. And then this blue retention clip will pop right off. Now the card will still be held in the place because we still have that metal bracket right there that locks in. So it'll be okay. Um, so now that that's done, we uh, we just had to put our pro secondary processor riser back in the system. And in doing so, we had to make sure and uh, re-plug in that, uh, that power adapter. Otherwise, we won't be able to recognize that secondary CPU riser. Okay, so once that's plugged in, we've done our big upgrades to get this system ready for gaming. So we have a few more steps involved. Uh, we have to put our side panel back on. If you don't put your side panel back on, the T5500 uh, will, will rev up kind of like a jet engine. So make sure it's, it's on. Um, here's a look at the back of the chassis now that we've got our components installed. Now we have three, dis three display ports, one HDMI, and one DVI port. Okay, so now that we, uh, we booted to Windows 10, everything's installed. We're going to go to Disk Management, and we're going to enable that NVMe drive. So we've got some old partitions. We don't care about that. We're just going to go ahead and allocate that unused space. Um, we're going to make it the E drive, and we're going to name it uh, Super Fast Drive. So, again, you're going to use this NVMe for putting any super large files or programs, anything that takes a long time to, to open up, stored on the NVMe drive because it will run three to six times faster than a con conventional solid-state drive. It'll change your life, basically. All right, so now that that's installed, uh, we do have to go to NVIDIA's website and install the G GeForce Experience. Um, as well as our GeForce drivers. So go to NVIDIA.com, click on uh, GeForce drivers, go to GeForce 10 series. And if you don't use a 1080, it's fine. You just have to go to wherever your driver is. Um, there's a way to auto-detect the GPU as well. It's best to install the latest driver for your GPU for the best results. All right, so we download that. Uh, we've installed it. And... Now we'll go and take a look and show you the GeForce Experience. G4, if you've never used GeForce Experience, it's awesome because it'll automatically find the games on your system. And it will allow you to optimize them based off your system configuration. All right, so we like to use a, a benchmark test in a game called The Division. So we're going to go ahead and optimize uh, the GeForce Experience for The Division. Okay, so we're going to run a benchmark here. Um, and everything's basically on high or ultra. Um, we have allowed it to max out frames. Now, something to note is we're going to lose about 15% of our frames because uh, we're using uh, OBS and an HDMI port um, to test this. So if you, well, not if, 
you should be using a monitor that supports DisplayPort because that's how you'll get the most frames. Um, when we did our initial test with a, a gaming monitor, um, an Acer gaming monitor, 140 hertz uh, DisplayPort to DisplayPort, we got a, almost 120 frames using the same specs. Um, so you're gonna you're gonna see a drop off in this test, but it's gonna give us a good idea of how well the the system is performing, and. So using HDMI, we did only get just under 90 frames. But again, if you use a DisplayPort um, to DisplayPort monitor, um, you're going to get well over 100 frames using the system, which is pretty amazing considering uh, the system is about 10 years old. It's not far behind uh, even the, the latest and greatest current systems. Um, uh, that being said, most of the money in this system is in that graphics card. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. Um, if it was, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Also, um, we do monthly giveaways on GreenPCGamers.com. All you have to do is uh, like Green PC Gamers on Facebook. So go to Green PC Gamers on Facebook, and all you have to do is like it, and then you'll qualify for the giveaways. Unfortunately, we are not able to ship out of the lower 48 states. Um, so... Um, if you still like the page, we, we really appreciate it. But um, thank you so much for watching.